you ever wonder what all those Chrome pages are for? You know, the ones with Chrome URLs. And what exactly are Chrome internals? I'm Sam Dutton, and I work with the Chrome team as a developer advocate. Now, I'm not going to go through every single one of these special URLs because the last time I checked, there were around about 80 of them. But in this video, you'll learn about the different types of Chrome URLs and how they can help you understand browser features and debug your sites and apps. You can find links to all these URLs at Chrome Chrome URLs. And you'll notice that there are several different types of Chrome URLs. There are pages that describe the Chrome environment, pages with details of the current user setup, pages for developer tools, Chrome experiments, Chrome API internals, and logging for network events and user interactions. Just bear in mind that the Chrome URLs are not meant to be accessed routinely by non-technical users. And many of these pages are actually built to help engineers develop the browser. So that, you know, they're not for web developers to debug websites. And one other thing to remember, you can't link to Chrome pages. And that's deliberate to reduce the risk of attacks that try to trick users into changing settings. So let's start with the Chrome setup. Chrome version is a good place to find full version information for Chrome. You can copy version details if you're filing a bug, along with information about your device's operating system. Chrome version also shows what flags are set if you're running Chrome from the command line and which Chrome profile you're using. Chrome credits gives you an idea of just how many different projects make up a modern web browser like Chrome. Chrome Components, well, as you might expect, lists the parts of Chrome called components. To ensure that updates can be rapid and modular, Chrome uses an architectural approach known as components. For example, Chrome has a component for the Minikin hyphenation library, which is actually also shared with Android. Chrome uses an origin trial component to communicate active trials with Chrome clients separately from the installed Chrome binary. Now, components can be updated automatically without needing the browser to be restarted. And that's particularly important for security features. You can view components and you know, force updates, if need be, from the Chrome Components page. Chrome Management shows the managed Chrome setup if you're using Chrome in a corporate installation. Chrome policy lists enterprise policy values set by your administrator. And you can see that my employer has kindly allowed me to play the dinosaur game. Chrome interstitials is interesting. You can see the different ways that Chrome protects users from malware, phishing, and fake URLs. Chrome bookmarks is the place to view and edit all your bookmarks. And lastly, Chrome Extensions is where you can view installed extensions and turn on developer mode if you want to load your own local extensions for testing. Chrome What's New is a good place to find out about new Chrome features and top voted extensions. And last but not least, Chrome Dino takes you on a journey with an old friend. So let's take a look at some pages that provide information about the browser environment, the hardware operating system, and network. Chrome System shows system diagnostics, including hardware, memory usage, and connected devices. Chrome Net Internals provides tools such as DNS lookup. Chrome Net Export allows you to log network activity and then view it using Chrome's NetLog Viewer. You can view network events, a timeline, and access other network tools. Chrome Device Log can be useful for device debugging. For example, you can see here that yeah, when I've connected my earbuds via Bluetooth. And now you can see the log as I use a passkey on my phone to authenticate sign-in. Now let's take a look at Chrome URLs for testing and experimentation. Chrome Flags lists experimental features that are available for testing in Chrome, but not enabled by default. Now, as it says on the Chrome Flags page, by enabling these features, you could lose data or compromise your security or privacy. And you should never rely on these features as we add and you know, remove flags very rapidly. 
If you're an enterprise IT admin, you should not be using Chrome flags in production. You might want to look instead at the enterprise policies. Now, having said all that, if you're a web developer and you're curious and you like trying out new technology, then getting to know Chrome flags can be really worthwhile. If you're a developer, there are two particular flags you might want to consider. The Experimental Web Platform Features flag well, it does what it says, and likewise, the Experimental JavaScript Features flag. Everything marked as status experimental in the Chromium file shown here is an experimental web platform feature. Now, there's a link to this code in the article that accompanies this video. Chrome also has a number of pages to help you test how your site or app responds when there's an unexpected browser event. For example, when a single tab hangs or crashes or Chrome crashes completely. But, you know, just be careful. These pages do what they say. Chrome induced browser crash for reals really will crash the browser. There are also several Chrome URLs that provide information about your interactions with the browser. Chrome site engagement can be interesting. It shows what sites you're most engaged with. And here you can see that in Chrome Canary, I spent a lot of time debugging API demos. Chrome Media Engagement shows your engagement with media in the browser. In other words, audio and video. Chrome also provides pages to help you try out and debug APIs and browser features. The URLs for these pages all end in internals, and you can see a whole lot of them here. So let's take a look at a couple of examples. Now, one thing you'll notice, these pages are built for techies. They're not built for consumers. So, you know, the design is Functional, not fancy. Chrome WebRTC internals, as you might expect, shows information about any WebRTC calls in progress. And in case you haven't encountered WebRTC, it's a set of APIs to provide real-time communication for video, voice, and data. If you've ever done video chat, you've probably used WebRTC. So, as I start a call with Google Meet, you can see WebRTC internals providing a lot of information about the call. As I join my Gopher friends here, you can see how WebRTC internals responds. Next up, autofill internals. This shows how Chrome's autofill features respond when you fill in an online form. It's really useful for debugging autofill. Chrome Password Manager internals is handy for debugging sign up and sign in forms. You can see the logs here when I open a sign in form demo. Chrome Accessibility is very helpful for debugging accessibility features. You can even record accessibility events, as you can see here when I fill in a form. Chrome Media Internals is great for debugging video and audio playback. So here you can see that I've opened a page with a WebM video on it. And Chrome Media Internals provides all the details. Chrome Service Worker Internals is the best place to get an overview of Service Worker activations. And there are more internals pages for you know, media features, Bluetooth, storage, network, extensions, browser profiles, and much more. So that's Chrome URLs. To find out more, take a look at our article. Thanks for watching, and be sure to check out the other videos in the Chrome Concepts series.